Okay, you ready? Yes. Now. A Peloton? Give it up for our first time riding. All right, first ride. I'm a little nervous, but excited. Let's do this. Five days in a row. You surprised? I am. 6 a.m. Yay. Rising with the sun. That was totally worth it. Let's go, Grace in Boston. 50 rides. She just said my name. A year ago, I didn't realize how much this would change me. Thank you. This holiday, give the gift of Peloton. Well, little column A, little column B. First of all, I just want to tell you what a great show you got. I listen to you all the time. Thank you, thank you. What do you want to talk about? Hey, did I tell you guys I got a goat? Yeah, baby! <laughs> Well, good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, wherever you are, whatever you do. A lot of things happening in the world today. Most of them are far beyond our control, you might say. So perhaps it's time we took a pause and thought about life and thought about the laws of gravity. Exercise, stationary bikes, social media outrage, politics, and or the news. Don't touch that dial. Just try to hear me out for a little while. Well, for whatever reason, that one Stephen King book, the only one I've ever read, or technically had read to me, still haunts me. I know why, but it still does. It still makes me queasy. Meanwhile, the social media has erupted with faux outrage over an ad for a stationary bike. That's it. That's the punchline. What else is new? Am I right? Here's how you get a hold of me. The text machine is area code 209-565-DAVE. It's 209-565-3283. The email dave at thedavebowmanshow.com. And of course, we're on the web. Just look for The Dave Bowman Show on Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, or your preferred non-denominational web search engine. Ego biberi capula sed ali viverv. I drink coffee so that others might live. Uh, sorry for those of you watching. I don't... The problem with watching this is that I see myself and weirds me out. My hat's on crooked, which I hate. Almost as much as I hate Stephen King books, which is really unfair because I've only, I've only actually read or technically had read to me one Stephen King book, and that was a long time ago. I was on a trip to Southern California, and the person that I was writing with happened to be a huge Stephen King fan and a huge fan of, of scary movies, which I just don't get. I'm sorry. I, I've never understood the fascination with being frightened on purpose. I I guess I understand the adrenaline rush, but I just, for me, scary movies are not something that is in the, that is, that, that's in the, the pantheon of things I want to do. I just, I've never enjoyed them. Uh, most of them are, let's face it, really crappy movies. But then you add into that the fact that you're... I don't know. You're dealing with uh, you're dealing with the the elements of the psychology behind it. I guess I don't know. I I don't like watching scary movies because then I got to go to sleep. And for much of my life, much of my adult life, I lived alone. And and while I'm not someone that's subject to that sort of thing on a normal basis, there have been times when you know <laughs> there's a creek somewhere or uh, yeah, creek C R E A K. Okay, uh, not creek the water running, C R E E K. Okay. Anyway, the point being that, as a general rule of thumb, they're not something that I participate in. There's been a few, and there's even one that I really like. It's called Below. Uh, it's a submarine movie, which is probably why I like it more than uh, the, the, the scary element of it. And it's an interesting kind of twisty story. But uh, Stephen King is something that I've stayed away from. I've never read it, I've never read. Any of the uh, Pet Cemetery? I've never read any of them. Don't have any interest in it. Never seen the movies. Don't have any interest in it. But this particular person that I was traveling with loved Stephen King and loved scary movies. And so we would often go to scary movies, which, again, um, you know, it just proves the old adage of what a guy will do for, for uh, you know what. But uh, the point being that <laughs> It, what I discovered at the scary movies was that if I took my glasses off, I couldn't see anything. And so, yeah, I would hear the screams and I would hear the chopping noises and that kind of thing. But I, I never really actually saw any of it, it didn't really, so it didn't really bother me. But being being who I am, I, I tend to stay away from them. But on this particular trip to Southern California, um, she brought with her the audio book of one of the Stephen King books. And she had said, what she said was she particularly chose this one because she thought 
what she said was it wasn't scary. So what I figured out later was that's not why she picked it at all. But at any particular rate, it's the only one I've ever listened to. It's the only one I've ever heard. It's the only one I've ever uh, been a part of. And frankly, it was, uh, it was a creepy book. It's a book about a guy who is fat. Yeah, like me. Um, and he goes to his doctor and like all fat people do, we go to the doctors and the doctor is normally, and if you're, if you're like me and you've, you've struggled with this all your life, you understand this. Normally the doctor is sympathetic to you. Well, maybe you should try this. Maybe you should try that. Maybe you should, you know, do this. Maybe, maybe this will help here. Let's try this. You know, they're normally very sympathetic, but the doctor in this book was not very sympathetic at all. Basically he said to the guy, you're a fat and you're going to die. And I could tell you all this cool stuff about what you could do or should do, but I'm not going to bother because you're not listening anyway. So kiss off, uh, pay me $40 and, you know, that's it. I mean, that was pretty much it. And so the guy walks out of the office and he's a little shook up by this and he goes home. And of course he has a stationary bike that like most of us that have had stationary bikes or ellipticals or whatever, just, you know, it's a, it's a device for collecting stuff. I mean, we hang our clothes on it. We, it's never used for what it's supposed to be used for. And he looks at it and walks away and looks at it and walks away and looks at it and walks away. And as the story develops, he becomes obsessed with the bike and he becomes obsessed with riding the bike. And I think he goes crazy. I really do. I mean, he, he gets on the bike and the bike magically trans, transmits him to some other universe world that's in a painting and the painting is of a road that's going through a forest he's in new hampshire or someplace like that so and and he in his head he's riding this road in new hampshire that never ends and he keeps meeting people and it turns out that the people he's meeting are himself his insides his cells and crap like that and it's it, 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 it's i don't know how to describe it it's, it's not scary, but it is a little nerve wracking because he starts getting paranoid and he becomes very obsessive with it. And it's that, but it's that ride on the road that is creepy because he rides on this very dark road in a dark forest. And that in, in, in this, you know, he's just imagining all these things that are trying to get him because of course he's going to die and, you know, he's trying to prevent that. So it's it's just it's typical Stephen King I guess I don't read a lot of so uh, for those of you watching the video this road that goes down this forest is dark and creepy and scary and that is actually the road that I was driving on last night at work we had to deliver a place that lives out in well let's just call it BFE and. <laughs> And the people there are not, I mean, they're wonderful people. And, and every time I go there, we have this conversation about how much he loves being out where he is away from everybody else. But the road to get there in the daytime, it's just a dirt country road. It's just a dirt country road. But at nighttime, as you can see, it takes on a different quality to it. And like the man riding on the bike in Stationary Bike, the book by Stephen King, it's a little creepy. And the further I went on this road last night, and it's about two miles down this thing, and as you can see, it's really washboarded, and you can't really go. The speed limit is 15, but you can't do that because the truck's bouncing all over the place. And so it was starting to creep me out. And, of course, it brought to mind that book again to me, and it, it made me think about that book and that story of what was going on in that Stephen King book, which was later, of course, turned into a movie that I've not been able to find. And that movie, of course, is the, the, the setting of the book to a film. And uh, I've never seen it because, again, the book, listening to the book on tape kind of creeped me out as I was driving to Southern California. And it's a fascinating story. I wish I, I, 
if it was written by anybody other than Stephen King, I'd probably be okay with it. <laughs> but because it's Stephen King, I keep waiting for something to jump out and grab people, and I keep waiting for for stuff to go wrong. So, uh, but it never it never seems to. I guess I don't know. It's it's kind of a kind of a weird thing if you think about it. It's it's um, I don't know. I I feel like there's some element to it that just uh, just. <sighs> I wish I could put my fingers on it, but I really can't. I, I, but the book has, has stuck with me for all these years. I mean, it really has. And that was in 2006, and I'm still still obsessing about the book that, that, uh, that made me creep out, I guess. I, it's the best way to put it. And, well, there you go. Um, at the end of the book, though, and this is probably the part that that people miss, I guess. The end of the book is about how he comes to terms with not just his obsession with getting healthy so that he doesn't die, but his own body. I mean, he talks to his body. He talks to his his intestines. He talks to his stomach. He talks to his heart and his lungs. He talks to the lipids in his blood cells. And uh, it's, it's, like I said, it, it, he comes to terms with all this stuff and the end of the book is very, actually very positive. It's very hopeful, very uplifting in a lot of ways. It's this, you know, you can do this stuff, but you don't need to be obsessive about it. You just need to have some moderation in all things. And I, I think if you, if you boil the book down, Stationary Bike by Stephen King, down to its essence, that would be it, moderation, because moderation is what, what will get you where you want to go. Now, speaking as someone who has battled this kind of thing my entire life, I, I, I mean, I was, I was small probably until I was about 20, and then I ballooned up and shrank down and ballooned up and shrank down and ballooned up. And by, by 2006, when this book was presented to me, uh, I was a, right around 320, which I see pictures of myself from back then, and it's like, <laughs> it's it's bad but i didn't feel bad i didn't feel like i was problematic i didn't feel like any of that was 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 an issue but i was on my own dark road i mean i really was and those of you that have been with the show for a while they you know what i've gone through up and down and up and down and i think i've i've settled right at 270 and I, i'm still not happy with that i would much rather be 220 ish I'd much rather be 208, but, but I know what it takes to get there, and I can't do that. I physically cannot do it anymore. I cannot run the way I used to run. Obviously, I can't run at all anymore. Um, and things have, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm old now. I'm not 30 anymore. I'm 56, and it's depressing in a lot of ways. It really is. And that road just stretches out in front of you, and it gets darker and darker and darker, and you think to yourself, is, is it ever going to be in an end to this? And is it ever going to be uh, something that I can come to terms with? Which is why I was surprised, I guess, or interested when, of course, the Peloton ad came out for, for Christmas and boy, everybody just went berserk. Now, I saw this ad for the first time on, uh, on, on, on Thanksgiving Day, I think it was during the football games is when I saw it. It might have been before that, but, but really that's the first time I saw it. And my reaction to it initially was much different than what I'm told my reaction is supposed to be. I'm told that my reaction is supposed to be, uh, I'm supposed to be appalled. I'm supposed to be horrified because this ad is sexist. It is demeaning. It is misogynistic. It is insulting to people of weight, such as myself, because, you know, the woman who's given the Peloton is not exactly, uh, you know, she doesn't need to be on a Peloton is, is kind of the mentality of this whole thing. And, and I'm supposed to be insulted by it, but I, I will be honest with you. My first reaction to it was, damn, I wish I had $5,000 that my first reaction to it was, why does it have to be so expensive? If, 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 if this culture is really so obsessed with health and, you know, people getting healthy and people having these kinds of things that, that will help them. Why in God's name are we so obsessed with this? Why in God's name are we making this stuff so expensive? And of course, the answer is because they're really not. They're, 
they're interested in selling you equipment that that you will never use and that you will never uh, be a part of and uh, you know there's there's some element of truth to that i think there's some element to that that you look at and you go well okay <laughs> they're just trying to sell it's like the golf pros uh, trying to sell you all kinds of crap what's the movie 10 cup where she's bought you know a million things and 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 none of them are are, are worth anything because really what <laughs> they're doing is 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 just selling you crap well maybe an exercise bike is a bit different than that because if you will actually use it an exercise bike can actually be very beneficial an exercise bike can uh, can 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 help i mean it really can i know that you know that we all know that then the next question becomes you know why does it become so expensive why why do you got to pay three thousand dollars for for a bike and then another, what is it? I don't even know how much it is. Probably fifteen hundred a year for the for the classes. You know, they, they they advertise the classes in that thing, but the the classes don't come with the bike. I mean, you just get the bike. You have to, you actually have to um, pay separately for all of that. And it's, I don't know. There's a part of me that just says, well, I would love to do it. But I just, my problem with it is I don't have the money it takes to do it. And that's what frustrates me about the ad. But I'm told that, of course, that's not what I'm supposed to be upset about. What I'm supposed to be upset about is the way that this woman just meekly submitted to her husband's desire that she be skinny as a rail and that, that he gave her this ad, because, this bike, because he thinks she's fat and... You know, it's just typical misogyny, just typical male dominance. And, and <laughs> that struck me as funny. I mean, it really did. It struck me as bizarre that that was the reaction to it. Because, again, you know, I know a little bit about this stuff. And I know that there are people who are naturally svelte. I know that. I get it. I understand that there are people that that don't need to worry about driving down that or riding down that road. I, I get that. I understand that there are some people like that, but the vast majority of people who aren't, let's just say fat like me, it takes some effort. It takes some work. It takes some dedication to doing that. It takes some desire. It takes dedication. It takes a willingness to sacrifice something that for whatever reason, I'm not willing to do. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine the other night about football, and we, he's a football coach at a high school level, and we were talking about the fact that, you know, look, I played high school football. I didn't play for my high school, but I played in high school, played in the Navy, played in the military, got an offer of scholarship to uh, a Big 8 university as they were then, but I didn't have the passion for it. I just didn't. I, it's, it's not that I don't love football. I do, but it's just not, it's just, it wasn't what I wanted to spend my life doing. And given what football did to me, ultimately, kind of glad I didn't have that passion for it because I can't imagine how bad it would be if I didn't. But you got to have that passion for it. And so I imagine, I know because I've had gym memberships, I've gone to gyms, I've watched people who are not fat like me trying to lose weight ride as hard as anybody on those bikes, ride as hard as anybody on ellipticals, run as hard as anybody, lift as hard as anybody. Why? Because they have that passion and that dedication for it. And instead of focusing on that aspect of it, social media took off on this insulting side of it. And of course, that created some blowback and it created some, some problems and, and people reacted to this as if somehow or another, this is something else we're supposed to be upset about. This is something else we're supposed to be angry with. As opposed to looking at this like, like anybody else and going, you know, down in my basement, there's a stationary bike. You know, down in my basement, there's, a, there's an elliptical machine. Down in my basement, there's a, a, a regular bike. Down in my, you know, right down the road, there's a dark country road that I could be riding on, that I could be doing this stuff. And I know for, for a fact, I know this. I know that I feel better when I work out, I know that I feel better. The weight aside, I mean, sure, I'd like to be 225. I'd like to be 208. I'd love that. And I got a closet full of clothes over there I can't wear. I would love that. But more than that, there's a certain emotional aspect to it that I love that, that enables me to deal with things better 
that puts me in a better mood, all of those kinds of things. And I know that. Somehow or another, though, I get up in the morning and I think to myself, uh, not today, it's rainy, not today, my knees hurt, not today, the coffee's extra good, not today, we should go out to breakfast and have biscuits and gravy and all kinds of stuff. I know that. And yet, somehow or another, I can't motivate myself. And here's a commercial that says to somebody, hey, motivate yourself, motivate yourself to do something for yourself. And a husband that gives his wife something that helps her to be a better person. And she wants that. That's the part. Did you hear her reaction? It's not something where she goes, oh, I'm fat and I'm disappointing my husband. It's none of that. It's look at look, look at what this has done for me. And instead, we're told to react to this with anger. We're we're told to be mad at Peloton. We're told to be mad at the people who make it. We're supposed to laugh because Ryan Reynolds, who is a pretty funny guy, I'll give you that immediately uh, countered back with a with with a gen ad, aviation gen ad, which is actually pretty funny. I, <clears throat> I, I'll give him that. Um, he takes the same actress and puts her in a gen ad where she's just, she's just, it, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it up. I can't even describe it because there's not a whole lot of, uh, not a whole lot of action. In, but the punchline is, hey, you look great. <laughs> And she's, she's just pounding Jen. It's, it's actually pretty funny, but it's, but it's counterproductive to the, to the ideas of, of, of what we're talking about here. It's counterproductive to the ideas of what the Peloton ad originally was trying to get across, which is that exercise makes you feel better. And we all know that just like the guy in, in Stephen King's book, whose name I've long since forgotten. Sorry. I'm not going to go read the book to find out, but uh, just like that guy's doctor who says to him, I could tell you, do this, do that. I could tell you you're fine. Hey, try to lose a few pounds, you know, cut back on this, cut back. I could tell you all that, but you're not going to listen anyway. So fuck it. You're going to die. I mean, that's literally what the doctor says to him. I don't know. I, I like my doctor a lot. I have a, I have a doctor that's a former Air Force. He's a retired pilot flight surgeon. Uh, we, we, we often talk about military stuff and we, we have good conversations about stuff. And the, you know, there's a lot of concerns in my, my health about my diabetes and my, my blood pressure, which has been pretty well controlled for the past few years. And there's a lot of concerns about things, but I gotta be honest with you. There are a few times where I wish he would look me in the eye and say, you're going to fucking die. Cause you're not doing anything. You're not, you're, you're, you're not doing it, and, I, and I'm not going to have you as a patient anymore because, frankly, there's nothing more I can do for you. I mean, here's, you know, the pills that I take. Every one of these is freaking full, and I know for a fact. I know this. This isn't, this isn't something that I suspect. It's not something that I've read about. It's not something that I think. It's something that I know for a fact. If I'd get on that freaking elliptical and run for half an hour, four times a week, five times a week, feel better and I wouldn't need half of those. But somehow or another, and this is the whole point of the book, and I think in some ways it's the whole point of the ad, we won't do it. Now, the the warning of the book is don't get obsessed. Don't become don't become obsessive. And I think I think maybe the the Peloton ad missed that part of it because she's getting up every morning and, you know, videotaping herself. And I, I, if I had a problem with the ad, that's where it is. But, but the reality of it is this obsession. And, and I know, cause I've been there. I'm telling you, I've been there with this whole, Oh, you know, if I sniff a piece of cheese, I got to run four miles at one point in my life. And I, I understand it. Believe me, I get it. And the whole point of the book is don't become obsessed. Don't start talking to your body like it's a real, like it's real people, like it's, you know, lipids and, and, and all of that crap in the, inside you that's, that's telling you how to do it. Just ride on the road and enjoy it. Just, just let your mind go. I, for myself, I like to watch, you know, I, I used to like to listen to music, but the problem with that was, uh, I, I, you know, music is not as distracting as it used to be to me. I tried to listen to podcasts while I'm run, but, but those get distracting to me too, because I start talking back to people. And at the end of the day, I find myself back out on that road again. So what I like to do now is watch, watch movies, 
TV shows, whatever. Got the giant iPad. I got the professional iPad. So, so I try to, I try to put something on there that I like to watch and it, you know, occupies my mind while I'm running and on, on the elliptical. Cause I don't run for real life, but I haven't been. You remember a few months ago, I had Tim Royce on the show and we talked about, you know, controlling my blood sugars and all that. I haven't been since then. And I keep thinking to myself, that's a long, dark road. And it ends with me either dead because I didn't take care of myself or <coughs> with me going crazy because I become obsessed like the guy in, guy in the Stephen King book, Stationary Bike. Yeah, I, 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 I get the Peloton ad and I don't get the reaction to it. I don't, I don't understand how in a society that is obsessed obsessed with being skinny and healthy we're critical of an ad that says to somebody here's how you can here's how you can you know take care of yourself here's how you can be healthy and if that's what works for you and if that's what you're that's what you really want why would that be a problem i don't i don't get why it's a problem for people and it's bizarre to me to think about that. It's bizarre to me to consider that sort of thing. One of my favorite Twitter places, Super 70 Sports, tweeted this the other day. About 97% of commercials are stupid. But we've somehow decided to take it out on this Peloton ad like Ron Jaworski breaking down the fucking Zapruder film. <laughs> it's about it, isn't it? Instead of looking at it and going... I wish I could have one of those. What can I do that's like that? What can I do that'll give me that same benefit without spending $5,000? Because that's what I need to be doing, isn't it? That's where I need to, that's how I need to get out on my dark road. That's how I need to follow that road until it gets out of that forest. Moderation in all things. Don't go crazy. But you know what? Being healthy is important. And I wish... I hear my own words. I'm talking to myself more than I'm talking to anybody. But I know this. It's unlikely that I'll go to the gym today. So what does it take? And the answer is, I don't know. I got to get going because I do have to work today. Take the time right now. Tell the people that matter in your life you love them very much. You'd miss them if they weren't there. Don't pass up those opportunities. You don't want to have that regret. Plausibly Live, I'm Dave Bowman. This is my show, The Dave Bowman Show, right here on the Podcast 99 Internet Radio Network. See you Wednesday, everybody. Have a great uh, have a great rest of your Monday. The Dave Bowman Show is a Slippery Fish Entertainment production for the Podcast 99 Internet Radio Network. For more information or to complain about how the show offended you, the text or voicemail number is 209-565-DAVE. For more information about the show, log on to thedavebowmanshow.com. Hey, I'm going to go do something productive. I'm going to go watch television.